Hello, this is Bashar. In this one, I will show the debugger of Chrome. In the previous video, I demonstrated my way of debugging web applications. And in this one, I'm going to use the same project. You can find the links for the previous video and repository in the description. Now let's see how the application is working. Now in this one, we have this form and when we send a request to backend without filling the form, we receive this error. And it basically returns a validation error containing all the fields which are invalid. And if we fill this form, and send the request once again, here we are receiving 200 OK. And we have this message saying, please check your email for account activation. But the application is stuck at this point. We don't see this message being popped up anywhere. And we just have this spinner. And if we check the console, we have this error saying there is this error, cannot read properties of undefined. In the previous one, I showed how we can debug the issues for this type of errors. Now in this one, we are going to do the debugging with the Chrome developer tools. This error is thrown here in this file, signup.js and line 55. If you just click this one, it's going to be switching to the, the sources tab right here. And it's going to be opening that file. Let's try that, just clicking this one. And here we are in sources tab and the file signup.js is opened. And here we see the underline for the error part. Now we are going to debug this function. This is the submit function and this is being called as soon as we click the sign up button. So first thing, I'm just going to reload the application. So we are at initial state. Now I'm going to do the debugging in this file. But before that, I just want to show how we can open the files in the sources manually. So right here we have the options and just clicking command P and this is control P in Windows. And I type the file name, sign up. And here we see the matching one, just clicking it. Now we can add the debugger and breakpoints in the, into this file. And we can just add breakpoint by just toggling the line. Just clicking the line is like enabling a breakpoint for this line. And we also have the list of breakpoints right here in this section. And we can have multiple breakpoints like this. So just clicking line adds a breakpoint. And let's see how the application is working with this condition. So just clicking the sign up. And here we have this information right here. And also we have the highlighted part. This line is highlighted. And the breakpoint is basically stopping the code execution. And here we have the options to just resume the script execution. Or we can just uh, go step by step in each of these lines. Or if there are functions like this, like for instance, we are calling event prevent default, and we can just step into this function and we can just debug the step by step uh, in that function to see how it is working. But for now, let's just not focus to that part. Basically, we are just going to go through this, uh, this function uh, right here. So we are going to use this functionality step over functionality and just stepping over now we are at the body line this line 45 at the moment the form is empty and we are going to create this body object which will be passed to the axios later and if we hover the variable uh, we see it is undefined because it's going to be defined in this line and we haven't executed this one yet and uh, we can also see the the values of these variables, the username, email, and password, these are coming from the state. Initially, they are having the uh, empty text value. So if we just step over this one, now we have this body variable, which is having this email, password, and username fields having the empty text. We can also see the, the, the values of the, the variables within this scope, this local function. And we have this body, this one right here, we can see the details. And also we have this event object, uh, which is being triggered after the, the button is clicked. And we also see details uh, added right here. 
Now we have the body object, which is empty. And to keep track of the API progress, we have this state variable API progress right here. This one, which is initially false. So we set it to true, just stepping over. And then we are going to make the API call to backend via this Axios. So we are calling this Axios post with this body and we can hover this body to see what is the body object and just sending it. Now, as you can see, the, the spinner is visible and we fall into this catch block. Uh, we can see what is this error is about. Like we can uh, check that error right here. This error is in this catch part and this error, well, let's resize this part to make it a bit bigger. So this error is saying the request failed. And this error is basically the error object generated by Axios for the cases when the request is failed. Uh, so if the, if we are receiving a response other than 200, okay, it is drawing this error. And from this error, we can access to the, the response. And in this response, we have this data. We In this data, we have the validation errors. Basically, we do that right here. And we set the errors to this errors object. And then later we use those errors in the inputs right here uh, to show the error. So just uh, we are at this line and stepping over and the errors are visible at this point. And I'm just stepping over at this line, setting API progress to false to make this, uh, this part, this buttons uh, spinner to be gone. So we completed the function and just clicking resume. Now we are finished. So the the validation part is working properly. Now let's send the request, the valid request to backend. So we are sending user one, user one at mail.com and password. Again, we have this breakpoint right here and just clicking the sign up. So this uh, is uh, stopped at this line and going over this one. And let's see how the body object is created. And here we have the email, password, username. So this is the, these are the values we type into these inputs. Then setting the API progress to true. And we are going to call the Axios post. And here the request is receiving 200. Okay. Here we can see the status is 200. Okay. And the response has this data and in this data we have the message saying please check your email for account activation but the problem is we try to use that message we try to set that message into our state as this is a sign up success message but we have this typo right here we are saying this is response date data it must be data but we miss a, a letter here so we have a typo so when we are just stepping over this one, here we can see the, the code is jumped to the catch block. And we have another error this time. This is not the Axios uh, error object for the fail responses. It's triggered within this line. So the error we are trying to process at this line is not the actual the, the error object coming from uh, the Axios. So right here, when we try to access this, this errors response, which doesn't have that one, we can see that it's just an error which is containing just the text. Let's step over this one. Now we are seeing this error and this is being printed into the console. So we, we got this error. It is saying cannot read properties of undefined and it's trying to read data. So basically we were trying to read this data from this response object, but in that error, we didn't have a response. Therefore a response was undefined. And when we try to access an, at the field of an undefined object, we got that error. So that's how we can use the Chrome for debugger. And we can use in cases like this one, if we are not sure how the actual flow is going, uh, this is making it easier to, to understand how the step-by-step -step progress is being taken in this function. So this is a useful approach to debug the issues. But um, please keep in mind, 
the signup page is just like as the the source code we have in the project it's visible right here but if you are running this debugger on a on a, a, a production code uh, which is built for the production you may not be able to see the the the, the implementation as clear clear as this one as readable as this one so, so this is mainly useful during the development and that's all for this tutorial thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next one